Is that for me? I like that track. Is that for me? I don't think so. so uh, what well, for you? It, it used to be how how one exhibited one's dismay for a Chelsea performance. Yes. Um, when oh, well, was, then let's all do that then. I was going to say we should all do that at the next. Everybody should do that at the next home game. Mm-hmm. But this is what you used to do in the sixties. I kid you anyway. not. Everybody was would just go. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the Chelsea Fancast Slow Hand Clap Show, uh, fueled by Guinness, powered by celery. And interrupted by slow hand claps, but why not? It seems appropriate. Uh, I am, of course, Stanford Chidge, and the name of tonight's show is Pathetic <laughs> Chelsea Fancast number one one two six. And of course, I am joined, as ever, by the the righteous Jonathan Kidd, <laughs> <laughs> wanker. <laughs> <laughs> For those for those not aware of what went on prior to the uh, <laughs> to the show, uh, Chidge, Chidge uh, and Dane uh, landed him Chidge, yet again. <laughs> had a lovely chat about where was I because I apparently <laughs> hadn't appeared, and I was just sitting there backstage waiting for Chidge to allow me to enter. Whereupon they, the, it, whereupon Chidge was was how can I put it rude about me? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> not really that rude. Yeah, a bit rude. Not yeah. really. And, uh, yeah, and then I reminded him that he'd in fact called me a wanker last time. <laughs> The show. And in fact, he called me a wanker such a that he then forgot to press record. And we had to start, and the first start of the show had been really funny, and we had to do the whole thing again. It wasn't funny at all, no, but um, you know, <laughs> such is life. But oh, yes, dear. yes, but um, uh, love to be on the show, fantastic, love with a great guest, excellent guest, Dane. Of course, we haven't seen, don't see often enough, Dane. No, here, mate. What's the matter with you? Make yourself available more. Come on, come on. And uh, um, uh, anyway, we're in a lovely, a lovely top with the Chelsea crest. Um, whereas I wearing a top with nothing at all on it. Um, and um, yes, Dane is uh, um, witty, charming, very informed. And uh, as I say, she'll be on more often. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, um, are you still doing um, still doing uh, uh, King's Meadow? Are you still involved in that? You still doing yeah, that? yeah. I've, I've only actually started doing it. Uh, I'll go give a brief spell while I was out. My my son had an accident. Uh, he was run over in November. Obviously, oh. I was you guys. No, I forgot. Sorry, forgive my yes. Okay, so it it was quite bad. He was in a coma and all that. Uh, had like fractured skull, bleeding on the brain, fractured eye socket, broken nose, jaw, and everything. Uh, cut a long story short, you would never have known anything's happened. He's not, he's perfectly normal. The only problem he has now is his nose has not healed properly. Uh, so he might have to have surgery on that in the future. And he missed most of the season, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, he's perfectly fine. So just had me out uh, from podcast for a while, and I went back with Dean within probably the last three, four weeks. Mm. Uh, and now I probably haven't done one with you guys, the OGs, for the old guys. Is that the old, is that the old guys? No, you, you, OGs is original gangsters. <laughs> uh, oh, I love it. Thank you. I thought it was old gits <laughs> or the o, the OWs, the original wankers. Yes, original wankers. You can interpret it any way you want. Uh, but yeah, no, since October. But yeah, I, now I'm, I'm as I said, I come back in with Dean. Dean's two shows a week, and so now, yeah, I'll be I'll be available when when I can. It's lovely to be back with you guys. Obviously, I said this was the bread and butter from 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 original. Yeah, Dean, Dean it's absolutely delightful to uh, to see you. Do send our, our big love. Our best, yeah, yes. As I said, your, my your sensitivity. Son. I forgot yeah. my dear chap. Oh no, no, don't be silly. That's no, fine. Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, it's you know. Yeah, well, I mean, I remember, you know, when it happened and you you and I were in touch and it was it was horrible for anybody to have to go through that. So do send him our best. Yeah, uh, right, you lovely people. Uh, as ever, do not forget you can watch the show live. On live! Our, live! Yeah. Live! <laughs> live. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, you can. You can watch the show live uh, yeah. on our YouTube channel and it's also on our Facebook page. It's called a simulcast for those that really want to know. Yep. I'm glad you uh, really wanted to know that. Uh, You can also, of course, still listen to it live on Mixler, uh, mixlr.com, or if you want to be precise, chelsea-fancast.mixlr.com. All three platforms have chat rooms so that you can join in this wonderful show, this this amazing experience of technology and lunacy. Uh, Yeah, you know, I mean, for example, Dean has said on Mixler, uh, only called you a duffer, J.K., which is nice. Which is nice for Chidge. Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, it was true, yeah. but could yeah. have been worse, wanker. Yeah, well, wanker, which was what he called me before. Yeah, I think it was more. <laughs> it was more the sneer on his face that uh, 
that will stay yeah. with me for the rest of my life. Well, when I called you wanker or duffer? No, no, just earlier when the duffer, because there was... Yeah, no, mate. Uh, that, uh, the sneer, the uh, no, mate, the sneer's got nothing to do with you. I have been grumpy as a grumpy person since about 7.15 <laughs> yesterday. It's really done me, I told you, in the build-up. It's really done me. Anyway, loads of people in the chat room. It's great fun uh, in there. And, of course, actually, what it replicates in a funny old sort of way is... Um, is our Discord group, which is like Mixler 24-7 without me waffling on. It's kind of perfect. Just really normal, nice, lovely, kind, sensitive people uh, talking to each other about Chelsea. Uh, now, to access that, uh, um, we kind of make that an exclusive to the people who are, are beautiful and lovely enough to donate to the uh, Patreon page. So uh, if you do that, I bung a couple of quid a month in there, you will get access to the Discord group. But of course, uh, you will also, if you want one, and of course you don't have to have one, but if you do want one, uh, we will send you a Kerry Dixon banner. How wow. lovely is that? Yes, indeed. Now, uh, that's patreon.com forward slash Chelsea Fancast. All very easy, really. Now, as some of you may know, in fact, I do believe that there are uh, people yet to be discovered in the Amazon rainforest who are aware of this beautiful thing here. Not Jonathan and Dane and myself, beautiful though we are. It's these lovely, lovely T-shirts which say, if they sell Connor, we riot. Which, frankly, it's a bit of a laugh, although it has boiled the piss of all the right people. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, so there you go. Um, we've also got mugs, by the way, if you want a mug instead. Oh, both of us are mugs. You? <laughs> yeah, we, we're mugs. I should have been uh, drinking uh, my coffee out of my If They Sell Connor, We Riot mug, shouldn't I? Um, but yeah, you know, they're, 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 I love them. I'm a fan. Um, so there you go. You can get a mug or you can get a T-shirt. All you have to do is either go to the Chelsea Fancast website, chelseafancast.com forward slash category forward slash merchandise. And you will be able to uh, get all the info you need, or just just email us. Just email what you want uh, the, at to the Chelsea Special at gmail dot com. Okay, all quite simple and, and straightforward. Uh, we're you know it's basically there to order. So just let us know what size you want and your address, and then you can pay via PayPal. Uh, twenty five quid uh, including postage and packing in the UK. Twenty eight quid in Europe. Thirty quid in North America for the t shirts. 15 quid, 18 quid, 20 quid for the mugs uh, for UK, Europe and North America. So there we go. I, I, I love them, actually. And uh, they take about 10, 10 days to two weeks to come through to you, I believe. I could be wrong. Uh, I, I often am, as we all know. But there you go. Right. After this beautiful little bit of music and chanting, we were gonna, we're gonna, um, um, you know, we're gonna have to talk about Sheffield United versus Chelsea. I'm really sorry about that. I'd like to apologise now for the next hour, hour and a half, but I'm afraid it's kind of what we do. Anyway, we will be back after this. Very full of voice, those Chelsea singers, aren't they, Chidge? Very full, very good. It was taken a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just not. Oh, uh, I mean, I, I don't. Well, I, did you go, JK? Did you? Were you actually there? No, did I didn't. I, 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 my lift let me down, and I couldn't get. I couldn't get back. So you uh, longed it I, off. I don't blame too much you. On, so I, 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 uh, I found a nice stream and uh, um, and just lay back and listen to. Uh, who uh, sounded like Chris Sutton for part of it, commenting, which, um, or was it? No, it couldn't have been him. He did the game the other day. Um, what was it, him? I think they, I, I don't know who it was. A couple he, was of, the old, he was doing the old firm. That's right. That's what I would confuse it with. I watched the old firm. I watched the old firm game, which was intriguing to say the least, because I don't think three quarters of both sides wouldn't wouldn't be able to get into any team in the Premier League or even the Champions League. Oh, they're, they're getting to Chelsea's side. Of course they were. To the, they'd all be playing. You're absolutely <laughs> right. So uh, you watched it on a dodgy stream. I, I also watched it on a dodgy stream. Um, and, and I mean, it was, it was well, actually, the pictures were all right. Although I had a thing saying uh, you need to upload Flash or, or up, update Flash, accept or 
or deny or whatever. Every time I clicked it, it went through to some porn site. So <laughs> well, it, that, that can be helpful. Chidwell well, doesn't complain so badly. It was a bit more creative than what I saw for yeah. the last few minutes. Yeah. I have to say. Creative use of implements. <laughs> oh, anyway, one of yeah. those sites. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so um, so I kind of had to put up with it. Luckily, well, depends where you stand, really. You could say, luckily, it was only in the corner of the screen. Uh, or you could say, unluckily, it wasn't where the goal was, which would have been maybe better. But I, at the same time, I was listening to the, the absolutely darling Jason Cundy, uh, who was doing the comms on, uh, you know, the, the, the Fifth Stand app. And they were about a minute and a half ahead of the pictures that I was watching. It was very unsatisfactory, a bit like the match, really. I'll tell, I tell you what, though, boys. Listening to Cundy was was fascinating. I mean, don't do it a lot because I'm usually at the matches or or whatever. But he he sounded like we sound. I mean, he he is just had it with this lot. I mean, he said before both of their goals, he said, "I can see that they're going to score in a minute. I can feel it. They're going to score. It's coming." Boom! He was right every time. And and he he he's you know I mean all of the things that we've been moaning about. Jace was was I mean actually to his credit, considering he's paid by the club, he was brutally honest in his assessment of how utterly shit we were from large parts of that game and and, and for why but i think the, the one thing that we really should note of course first of all is is really picking up from where we left off on friday jk one step forward two steps back again same shit different day all the same reasons lack of leadership lack of intensity lack of ability lack of football intelligence lack of motivation and desire Every fucking time we turn a corner, this lot turn it back on us. Unbelievable. Well, I, don't, I don't think it is turning a corner. I think it's just well, playing against. Well, we, we thought they against, we, when we thought it. When even he said so in the uh, in the presser, didn't he? Thought he was we were a corner had been been, been uh, um, turned just because I think somebody one of the journalists mentioned that. But it, it, he, we're going to talk about it later because I took notes from the the post presser. Um, excuse me, but. He talked about lack of energy. And I, I don't know what you think, but you can tell what kind of performance you're going to get by the way that they, they pass the ball about in the first 25 minutes. And all right, we're all over them and have masses of possession. Oh, possession. Side possession. Side by side, side, by side, by side by. Absolutely. Absolutely. Masses of that because Sheffield United were just backing off and didn't do anything. And in the second half, um, Sheffield United decided to press and we failed miserably to cope with it. So it's all the same patterns every single time. You see, we either can't get the ball anywhere near the goal because we're not good enough at setting shots up or we shoot over the bar. And when the opposition do press, we just can't get the ball out. And you, the ball is given to Desazi, who looks as if um, the worst, last thing he'd like in the world is to have the ball at his feet. And, and be on other, ice. Yeah, oh, it's just becoming... But also, uh, going off on another one here, why didn't he play Chalibur at right back? Why didn't he put leave Desazi in the middle? Chalibur's a competent right back. Well, I didn't. I don't understand why we have to go through this. Well, he played right back at, at Monaco, and he played pretty because he kept he had Mbappe in his pocket, man. Yeah, Mbappe in his pocket. Yeah, absolutely. The shit that we come up every every time with that. But he is worse and worse. It's getting. Uh, it's the, but already you've established by the fact you've got De Sazi playing right back that he will not go over the halfway line. So I suppose that's why he played Madweke. And to give Madweke credit, I think Madweke, Madweke takes people on. You've got to give him as a positive. I think one of the few positives coming out of that game was he actually does take people on. Remember, we had the ridiculousness of, uh, I mentioned it, of Adoy um, never taking anybody on, despite being uh, um, all over everybody in the youth team, as with, with Loftus Cheek. Nobody, all the things they did, well, they wouldn't do. Madweke always has a go and something is created. And his goal was a cracker. And, and I... I I think he came out with some merit from that game, but it's having um, a tra trademark goal, that isn't it? Oh, completely, completely. It is, it, 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 you know, we're, we're still haven't finished. The, I, I can, I can bear with him not being the finished article and it improved because he's twenty-one. But he's doing the business. He scored a couple of goals the other day for the under twenty-ones. Clearly, he's, he's, he's one. He's a keeper. He's a keeper. Is Whereas, he put him in goal then. Oh, I didn't think of that. <laughs> You're absolutely right. He might be. He might be better than Petrovic because Petrovic is unfortunately. No, I, I, I'll tell you what. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna stand up for for Petrovic very quickly. Then I'll, I'll bring you in, uh, Dane. But because I saw he was getting a lot of grief, and, and and you know, this I do feel for keepers. You know, they make one mistake yeah, yeah, and everybody's yeah. on their ass. But actually, Petrovic is substantially better. Well, I think I'm substantially better. Than bloody Sanchez, and I'm a stone overweight at the moment, and about five foot three. 
But I mean, you I'm, know, he. Know yeah. Well, no, I'm, I'm I'm about five ten, but I think I'm shrinking because I'm getting you older. Shrunk, I've shrunk. I'm now four foot seven. I know. Are you that tall? I always thought you were about four. Yeah, four I know. Four. I will bounce back if we uh, beat Everton. Are we are we going to get some T-shirts with you as a gnome on them? Wasn't that? A, <laughs> I'd a, love, a, I a thought plan? that was the idea. <laughs> it yeah. was, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. It was. It was. I'm a looking plan, forward to that. Thank you. Then I can claim image rights. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. A bit like Mason Mount. Oh, yeah. controversial. Oh, um, whoa. Bastardo. Bastardo. No, we didn't Bastard. call him that, did he? What did he call Bastard. him? Oh, oh he... mate. No, I, I had it. No, I had it. Because, well, oh, hang on. Right. Look, I can talk and find this at the same time, I reckon. All right. Are you sure? I am sure. Have right. you pressed Petrovic. record, Chidge? Have you pressed I, record? I, I, I think so. I haven't heard anybody <laughs> complain yet. Um, anyway, Petrovic, Petrovic, Petrovic. Yeah, I just think it's a bit unfair. I think he's substantially better than uh, Sanchez, all yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think on the whole, he's been pretty good. I mean, he made a superb save in the first half when they could have gone 1-0 up. So, you know, I'm, I'm not having it that he's no good. Right, now I found it, right? Ready? Yeah. Uh, remember where you are, you vain, poorly birthed asshole. Fantastic. And I bet he didn't really say that, John. That's just a terrible translation. It's a wonderfully awful Google translation. It is absolutely yeah. awful. But a great thing to say to somebody who you spent the past I think we should training with. You Instead know. of calling you wanker, I'll just call you vain, poorly birthed <laughs> asshole. <laughs> now I on. prefer that. It's quite. It's almost quite Shakespearean. You know, Isn't I, it? I, I think I, it's like Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I love that. Can I just finish off my bit about before Dane comes in? Forgive me, Dane. Just finish off. Um, Your I'll mother was a hamster. The, the girl with Petrovic was, was just just a minute, mm. just to say that. Um, uh, that so the main thing I find is that if they walk on the pitch and just flick the ball about, they've got no energy. Whereas against Man United, they were really up for it. Everybody's up for it. So you know what level we're going to be playing at. And that Sheffield United, all right, we scored first and we're all over them. But it doesn't mean we should be complacent. The energy just needs to up because all it needs is that moment where they step up a bit. And I agree completely. It was absolutely on the cards that they would score. They had about two sh had a shot and they were suddenly much more energetic than us. And you thought, well, they'll, they'll, something will happen because there's some, but also if you've got McBurney playing, McBurney is mad. And that's what you have to remember. There is a huge mad energy about that bloke. And he, he almost insisted that he score to the referee. We'll get onto the referee later because the referee was complete shite again. <laughs> But in a nice way, he's a nice ref. He, he goes no. around asking. He is. He, he tries to explain. He puts his. I watched him particular. Puts his hand on people's back. He pats them on the back a lot. Puts his arm around them. Still gets the, the decisions completely fucking wrong. <laughs> and they had Tierney, Tierney, the other git in the box doing the VAR, who missed those other two tackles. There were both red card offences. It's just and what goes on in this world of refs. You know, they, they've all got an opinion completely different to everybody else's. It will never work. It will all never right. work. All right. Listen. <laughs> hey, hey while, while JK starts to spontaneously. <laughs> let, 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 let's take it back. Uh, 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 you know, I mean, I, th I think, look, you know, it is bewildering. I mean, we, we know we, we, uh, we know we can't do anything about the lack of leadership. You know, there's nobody in there who's capable of doing that. Uh, I'm not so sure about the lack of ability and the lack of football intelligence. I'm afraid that 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 has to be bracketed into we've got some shit players. But one thing we can do, I mean, you know, Sheffield United have got shit players. Otherwise, they wouldn't be bottom of the league, you know, having shipped 80 goals. So they don't have shit. We're they have, they shit. don't We're shush, not that shit. shush. They don't shush. have they don't have ability, or, or or maybe you could argue some football intelligence. But I'm beginning to wonder, you know. So you can't do much about that, Dane. But you sure as shit can do something about a lack of intensity and a lack of motivation. And and I have to question some of these players and Pochettino for that. I mean, J.K.'s right. You know, it was it was they were dawdling around. It, you know, get into these teams that you know that there are no passengers in the Premier League, are there? No, it just you know, we were, I was saying off air before the show started. I was just wondering what they actually work on in the days leading up. I know the turnaround was not quick, you know, two three days, but you got to at some point sit them all down with a video, old score, and, and have a look at the opposition and their weaknesses. You can't just look at their previous results like like we ignorantly do and see eight nils, six nils and five nils and just think we're going to turn up and win. Uh, they have to be a little bit more professional about it, you would expect. So it makes you wonder what they went over before this game because I I went into the game complacent thinking we was going to win, as I said to you, I put 3-1 on my predictor league. 
But like JK said, after 20, 25 minutes, I was slumped in my chair thinking I can exactly see the way this game's going to go. Uh, we looked tired. We looked breath of, of ideas. Uh, you know, just there's just no rotate. We've got no rotation. The same three midfielders, the same forward. When the wingers play, they just they just do OK. You know, I think Madueke is a bit of a scapegoat. I've, I've been impressed with him more often than not. And he will have a look and be at an average next game and he'll be out of the team. Uh, we've seen slight glimpses of Mudrick recently again, just OK. And it's just bloody frustrating, isn't it? You just sit there and think, what the fuck are they freaking doing? Mm, uh, yeah. And you try and give them the benefit of the doubt and you try and give them this and that. Obviously, obviously after the May United game, we've had two, three days of maybe thinking, OK, maybe, you know, maybe. And then <laughs> yeah, there we go. It, it really is. It is bewildering. I mean, it, you know, I, I genuinely am really quite miserable after Sunday. And I'm, normally I'm not. Normally I can I can pick the bones out of a game and go, well, you know, there, you know, there's this and there's that and there's the other. And I can also see the bigger picture. But I mean, I'm sorry when I when I this is a team that are all but relegated. This is a team that are getting thumped at home four, five, six by decent sides. Clearly, we're not a decent side, but we should not be drawing two all away to this Sheffield United team, number one, okay, you can get unlucky. We all know that. You could get a red card or something or or a last-minute penalty. They, they invited it on themselves. Look at this for statistics, though, boys. Um, I mean, I, I know we hate XG, but on, on a humorous occasion, this it actually might work. Uh, Sheffield United's XG was 1.47. Ours was 0.41. I mean, we had six uh, six goal attempts, three on target, three off target. They had six on target, five off target. I mean, this should not be happening against a team that is all but relegated. It's just not good enough. It's not good enough. I I, I can't. I haven't got it with me. I have got it with me because I've got my WhatsApp open. Got my WhatsApp open. Um, good old John Gordon sent me this. Uh, Enzo versus Sheffield United, gave the ball away over 20 times and lost nine out of his 10 duels. Caicedo had a similar uh, a similar stat, I think, I read somewhere else. That's not good enough. It's just not good enough at any level of football, let alone, I mean, I, I, the money thing, you know, I know you can go on about that. You know, they, they didn't ask to be uh, signed for over 100 million quid, but... It's, I'm sorry, it's just not good enough. And on top of that, Dane, the thing that's really irking me most of all is two things, really. And this is this goes back to the la uh, one thing I didn't list, which is the mentality. You know, the minute Sheffield United scored, it became a completely different game. They crumbled again. They crumbled like my bloody rhubarb crumble, mate. And the other thing, I said this on uh, I was on I was on I was with Saggers uh, uh, on on Sunday night. It's brilliant. The last thing I wanted to do was to speak to people on TV, you know, being as miserable as sin. But I said, you know, this lot, you know, when it comes to game management, they could not manage their way out of a paper bag, Dane. There's none. Yeah. There's no management. It's frustrating to watch. You know, we was we was playing OK for a while, dominating per se, you know. But again, we just look so defensively average and nervous. The midfield are weak. There's so much. There's so the gaps in between from the midfield, from the forwards to the defence. The pressing is mixed and inconsistent. You'll have one guy pressing, no and then pressing. the two behind. No pressing, Dane, at all. Oh, back. Uh, it's just so frustrating to watch. And you're right. You just see the heads drop straight away. I've sat at Stamford Bridge so many times this season, and uh, you know we'll have periods of play where we look all right. As soon as that goal goes in, the heads drop, and just wonder what. Anyone there with any ounce of uh, football in intelligence, you know, the, the so-called directors who are making all the, the transfers and the decisions on midfield, did they even talk to Poch in the uh, in December leading up? Is, is there anyone they could have got in just 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 to sit in that spine, even like just defensive midfield, just to sit there and kick, pass, and freaking head the ball and, and do anything because they just drop, don't they? And even Thiago Silva probably. Have, Without doubt, our most experienced player. Even his, you can see. He, I don't think he wanted to be there. I was happy to see him start. Uh, I, thought, I he, thought he was decent, actually, Dane. I still you think know? he's our best centre back. I still think, even though he's got a mistake in him, if you look at the players, 
the regular defenders, take Gusto out of that, uh, you always, every second pass you're expecting them to give the ball away. The panic stations, whether whether with Thiago, it's more just a bit of a lack of concentration. I don't know whether the, you know the you know the end is is, is near for him and his career. Or, or the error he made, you know, the error he made on on Saturday, we didn't look up, we didn't look to no. see what was happening. But luckily, it was dealt with. It was dealt with. That was the only error he made. But you know, there's a there's a facility on the ball, isn't there? there's a there's a, 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 re, a relaxation of with everything. He's clearly the best player, but clearly he's. There's something happened between him and Pochettino. That, that, yeah, that... I, would, I would, I would, you know, ideally, I would have liked to have seen out the season with him and Colwell. Yeah, uh, the Sassy is quite good individually, but his everything else is just, you know, he's there's something there. But I, I don't know. I, I still keep on thinking maybe, maybe with him. I like there's... his attitude actually. I mean, I, I, I think he's a character, and I, th well, more to the point, I think he's got character. Yeah, and that, that's something that he's in. in it looks in, like he cares in... as well. He looks does yeah. look like he cares. But then yeah. he'll just you'll think, okay, this is it now, the sassy. And then he'll give a stupid pass away. Either the midfielder needs to drop and just take the ball off him to take that away from him, or just keep it five ten yards because yeah. with him, yeah, his 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 passing ability is he's probably shot to pieces. Well, him. And a lot of them, really. It's. Uh, uh, I mean, actually, I, I said it on Mon. On, on hang on, what, what day we we are Monday today? I said it on Friday, I think. But um, you know, Chaloba in the United game looked the most accomplished defender. I, I thought. I thought that was that. That set me thinking, really, because I think you know, qualitatively, he's a better defender and he's more comfortable with the ball than both Badi Ashil and Dizazi, and yet. If we kind of do a, do a, we need to get that effect, don't we? If we go back a few years to a parallel universe, Trevo was getting into the side only really because of injuries. He wasn't a first teamer. Um, so, you know, you could probably say that if nothing had changed, Trevo would still be a squad player, let's say. And yet he's 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 substantially better than both Badi Ashil and uh, and uh, Dizazi. Looks more comfortable on the ball, looks more comfortable in the team. And actually has more leadership qualities. I mean, it was him that was pulling, almost said pulling uh, Madueke off, but that's a bit naughty, isn't it? It was, uh, he, he was he was pulling Jay. Madueke Jay. off from Palmer oh. uh, in the wonderful clip that JK filmed and was nicked by some little, you know, bedroom uh, who, who resident. got 555,000. Well, I did tell you. You did. You know, you need to fucking got, put it on YouTube. I got seven, Chidge. I got seven. Put it on YouTube. Put it yeah. on YouTube. And did yes. why didn't you put your fan by on YouTube? Uh, I forgot. You, what, we, we, I gave you a tutorial the other night. I know, I know. But I was splitting up with my girlfriend. So okay, you, you're an emotional, you're an emotional wreck. I, know. I am, but I'm. Oh, yeah. And then you come on here, and I call you a duffer. You come in here for some love <laughs> and support, and you just, you just get a bitchy chidge to do. Off air, a duffer, and previously a wanker. So all in all. <laughs> You know, I love you, really. Can I ask a question about Cole? I love you more than your girlfriend does. <laughs> oh, geez. come and move in now. Move in now. I would. I'd happily yeah. move in with you. We'd, we'd spend the entire time laughing. Uh, like a couple of old bloody, yeah, you know. Yeah, a couple of old queens. A couple of old queens. Yeah, yeah uh, you're not allowed to say that anymore, are you? Um, uh, well, as in, as in, as in uh, you know, uh, leader of the realm. Yes, exactly. Lords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, this, this toe injury that Colwell has got. Now, forgive me knowing nothing about toe injuries maybe but he thinks I, he's bob marley when i broke my <laughs> i hope not it means it'd be dead soon. oh that's true yeah we don't want that <laughs> to happen do we good point good point dane but but when i broke my toe when i was riding my scooter and i i, I was being very groovy and uh dangled my leg and it hit a bollard um it, it uh <laughs> <laughs> Very good, very good, Jenny. Yes, mm. yes, but yes, true. Actually, yeah, your cat would be, yeah, yeah, your cat would probably, yeah, would people would follow the cat thinking, well, that's a very good cool, one. The ball's gone over there, has it? Um, uh, ball of wool, no, no, no. Um, um, uh, yeah, but I don't understand about toes. I don't the impression if toes are injured, it's pretty easy to put a sort of cover around them and play on, you know. I don't think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'd like somebody. In the medical department, if you ask Poch, he would say, oh, I don't know, I have not seen him, he'd say, because it's his, his usual thing. He doesn't ever. Who? Yeah, he'd say, yes, <laughs> almost, yes, yeah. Who? No, he's not been in our squad. Uh, he makes, no, he makes very nice pickle and yeah. sings reggae. <laughs> oh, no, not that, Levi. Okay. <laughs> Ye hey, look, I, I love you guys. This is what it's all about. I'm, I, I'm not kidding. I was as miserable as sin. I have been all day. I have been the grumpiest person in the universe. 
half an hour in, I'm laughing and laughing hysterically. You know, it's, this is the therapy of the fan cast. Um, look, the last thing I want to uh, talk about, uh, actually, there's actually no, I don't. I want to be miserable for a second and then be ang and then be angry, okay? Because uh, I did pull, I put, I pulled off again. I pulled off some stuff from Twitter, uh, which is quite frightening. Um, I can't remember who did this, so apologies for nicking your stuff and not crediting. It might be, a, it might be in CFC Daily, but these are the games where where, where we have conceded between uh, forty and fifty-five minutes. Burnley at home. Leicester at home, Newcastle at home, Brentford away, Leeds at home, Wolves at home, Crystal Palace at home, Wolves away, Everton away, Brighton at home, Man City at home twice, Forest at home, West Ham away. These are the games we've conceded between 80 and 90 minutes. Burnley at home, Newcastle at home, Man City away, Aston Villa away, Wolves at home, Middlesbrough at home, Luton away twice, Wolves away, Everton away, Brighton away, Newcastle away. Man City away, Brentford at home, Arsenal at home, West Ham away, Sheffield United away. That's a lot of goals to be conceded in crucial moments of the game. Uh, and this is from good old Scotty, at Scotty Hater, who says, uh, our Premier League record against the bottom six. You'll love this, JK. We've won four, drawn four, lost four. That's 20 dropped points against Wank. <laughs> defensively all over the pitch the worst Chelsea side I've ever seen manager is appalling no idea how to close a game out shut up shop too easy to blame the players at Scotty Hager well I don't agree with the second half of that I, I find no problem at all in in uh, blaming the players for this uh there are some very interesting uh, uh, there was another bit of stats no no okay no hey, here we go this is this is quite good got Noni Madueki said after the game <laughs> I mean, actually, Noni, Noni's post-match uh, performance was probably as good as his, uh, you know, 90 minutes or so, because I thought he had a good game. Our Achilles heel this season has been cashing in on momentum. We had an amazing result against Man United, and we needed to keep it rolling. There's positives. We're in a semi-final, unbeaten run, but these are the games we need to grind out. We would have put pressure on the European spots for the winter. I mean, actually, that's, that's quite a mature reflection by Noni. You know, that's the kind of thing you expect quite an experienced pro to come out with. So fair play to him. Anyway, um, by all means, comment on that. And then I want to talk about the Tunnel Club. So Dane, John, JK, who wants to, to comment on what they've just heard there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, should we move on? Well, I mean, it, it's 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 obvious, isn't it, that we... we... You know, I'm, I'm going to speak about uh, what he said at the of the post match conference, and he he actually talks about um, uh, how he thinks they've improved. And it was all earlier in the season that they've uh, they couldn't score, and they and they were letting goals in. So he thinks it's a positive, and that we're scoring now. But um, yeah, it's it, what, what, what do we need to say? It just shows how there is there is they're, nothing they're, to say. They're not good enough. They're just not good enough. And I I'll keep saying this. And yet, interesting. Um, Spy in all his uh, would because he asked some interesting questions in the uh, the post match. Um, that tweeted this week that he felt that, um, as most of the first team were in their first season in the Premier League, if you're criticizing them, um, you don't know anything about football, he said. Well, that's bullshit, which, which yeah, was bollocks, I thought, but nonetheless, it's it's um, there's always a different view of this and that we should be more. Well, I'm going to. I want to. Can I get to that in part? I'm going to talk about. Yeah, we'll that get on to that. Yeah, in yeah. part two, and I definitely want to hear about because you watched the press release. I want to talk about the Tunnel Club because this is something that really grinds my gears, as it does many people who go away, particularly Vosses away. Tunnel. Oh yeah, what then? You mean going down the tunnel? You mean? Well, I'm yeah. now going to call it the Tunnel Club in yeah. honor of in honor of yeah. their awfulness. Petrovic, Dizazi, Kukurella, Caicedo, Fernandez, Jackson, Badia, Shield, Cassidy, Chukwemeka, Mudrik, Pochettino, all straight down the tunnel. Gallagher, Chaloba, Noni, Palmer and Silva, the honourable exceptions here. This is from Ben Lawrence, by the way, at Ben Lawrence. Poor form, given how our away end was the highlight of the day, in all honesty. Now, Dane, when I was, uh, well, in the old regime, when we had Steve Atkins there, uh, the, uh, the board of the trust, I think I might have been chairman at the time, we would get into Steve's ear all the time when we spotted players going straight down the tunnel and not coming to the away support to acknowledge the fact that they'd you know, turned up in their number, had been very vocal, as they always are, supported the team, you know, and, and forked out quite a lot of money to do it and aggravation. 
And he he worked really hard in getting into the manager and getting in getting them to go and do that. So you know, there's a precedent for this. Um, I, I I don't know if anybody on the trust has, has has had a word. I think we bloody well ought to, because it really grinds people's gears. And it's bad enough for the fact that Pochettino's done absolutely nothing to engender any sort of connection between himself and the supporters, particularly the away fans. But he but said that he's not a clown. Chuck. I don't he's give a fuck. A it's not about being a clown. It's, he, you don't have to be a clown to do it. Just go up to the way in. Not you on, go not to the way in and you do that. You go, yeah. thank you. That's no, all look, you have to do. He's doing that. But clowns do that, Judge. Well, he's a fucking twat, not a clown. <laughs> because I'm sorry. It's just good manners. I mean, Dane, it grinds my gears. Does it grind yours? Yeah, yeah, you know, like, like, you know, like you guys, you know, you can't help people's ages, you know, I, I'm the age I am, I've been going to away games, not as much recent years, but, you know, away games since probably my favourite season, I think the 88-89 season, um, when we was in Division 2, so you have that rapport, you have that, you know, connection with the players, you know, they come and clap you, uh, it's interesting you said, like, Steve Atkins, I wonder if he would have actually gone straight to, like, John Terry, uh, I, I presume would have been captain at that time, and and, and John would have obviously pulled people up in it, you can only imagine. I don't know if we've got big enough personalities to say to the other players, you know, this is what you should do. You would think so. Connor's been in and around the club, Trevor, uh, since they were eight and nine. Uh, you would think that they would say, you know, this is what we should be doing. You know, yeah, we've been crap. You know, we could have been better, but we need to show respect to our fans. You know, they've come a long way on, 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 on a Sunday afternoon, early evening. Some of them might not be getting back to the early hours, late, you know, late, late evening, early hours of the morning and going to work the next day. All it is is a clap, like you say. It's not that hard, but it should be also led by not just the captain, by the manager. Uh, and I just, I just don't understand it. He would be uh, accepted a little bit more if he would just come, yeah. clap, hold his hands up, you know, uh, and uh, even in some of those early on performances, you know, it, it, when he was getting a little bit stick, just a Sorry about that. You know what I mean? Uh, no, not sorry. You're just clapping, say thank you for your support. You know, hopefully we'll do better next time. It's it, it is really poor to see. Uh, obviously mentioning Mason uh, Mount earlier briefly. Yeah, he was one for for a clap, wasn't he? And 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 getting people up. It just seems we've lost our soul a bit. You know, the connection with 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 the players, with the supporters, with the management, with the coaching, with the board. We all know it's probably a a very no, I wouldn't say an all-time low because people have seen a lot more worse than me, and I've seen a lot worse than maybe 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 the people who are younger than me. But it is at a, it is at a very very low at the moment. It, it is. I mean, you know, good point. Uh, though, Chidge, there. Good point. Well, Cap, I'll, I'll, I'll read it out for those of you who are not, who are watching in black and white or listening in black and white. Uh, Caroline uh, Walters has put up. Kathy CFC shared a video, and there were huge boos coming from the away end. And I ask. Why would the player players go over to get booed and yelled at? Because that's that's how it works, Caroline. You know, you had you had five players or or, or four was it was it uh, Gallagher, Chaloba, Noni, Palmer, and Silver. They all went up, and this is what you do if you put in a stinker. You still go up and acknowledge the fans, and you take the crap. You man up. You front up. That's what you do if you've got character and ball. You know, I you don't run away. You don't scuttle down like you don't give a shit. It's a disgrace, I think. I think it's worse. I think the very fact you've made the huge effort to get up to Sheffield and, uh, all right, you don't think the team played very well, but you're there. You've made that effort. You've been you've been cheering for the fans. You've been uh, for the players all the way through. And uh, uh, and the fact that they all beetle off is just absurd. It's just not... I feel utterly... Whenever I'm away and that happens, I, I feel hurt by it, I'm afraid. I feel... I'm, it is. I'm, I'm, I feel... They the, the connection just Dismissive. isn't there, and and we've been you know behind them all the way and cheering them on, and you just want some kind of of approval that you've actually made an effort to get up to watch them because it's you know who else you're not it's, you're not watching it just you know represent uh, the a representative of the team you are involved in each player you want the players to do well and so you 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 want despite the some of them being fucking awful you actually want them to do well you can't help it it's just in your in your spirit, well, in your heart, you know, that's what you do, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I tone, I personally tone down a little bit as well. You know, like everyone, I'm pissed off, I'm angry. But when I see a player coming round, my, you know, I've, I've, I haven't been impressed with Chilworth's performances this season. But as soon as I see him, you know, from from well, from well. my up to view, coming round to clap us, he's he's a clapper. 
you know, I'll clap him back and I'll tone down a little bit and I'll appreciate the fact that, oh, yeah, even though I didn't think he played well in, in, in said game or, or any game, I respect the fact that he gets it. Uh, Reese gets it. You know, maybe Reese is the club captain. What is he? Is he just spending all his time at home? He's got to be in and around the club. He needs to be saying to the players, this is what you need to do. We he's need at every to game. He's at that's every all. game. I don't know about the away games. All the home games. In the, he's just behind them in the dugout. You just Another one who's been there since six, yeah. seven, eight. You know, he yeah. knows what it's all about. He's seen they the come up onto the pitch. Before. They come up onto the pitch. If they if the home games, they come up and brace everybody. The Chile and he, because they're the they're the, the, the they both they've both won the European Cup. Not wow. Surprisingly, Are you, uh, well, can you see them? I've got my European Cup shirt on tonight. Uh, they're on here somewhere. Uh, where do the only one you can see is Werner? Oh yeah, I can see an Arsenal striker, Tottenham striker, Silver. Man United midfielder. <laughs> really good. Oh, actually, there you go. James, James was there. Chilwell was there. There you go. You're right. They've won a European Cup. In There's case a anybody Madrid player on there as well, isn't there? In case anybody had forgotten. You know, because <laughs> well, I know well, yeah, a couple of years ago. That's the fucking problem. Isn't I know. It? It, it, seems, it seems like a very long time ago. Uh anyway, uh we're going to move on. We're going to have a quick break and uh, then we're going to come back. And uh, amongst other things, uh, we're going to talk about uh, Pochettino, uh, his part in our downfall, as a Spike Milligan once wrote, uh, and uh, all sorts of other stuff too, because that's what we do on the Chelsea Fancast. We will be back very soon, he says, trying to find the clip. There you go. Fans, real I'm Jason Cundy, and you're listening to Chidge and the Boys on the Chelsea Football Fancast. Total nutters and proper Chels. Welcome back. I'm Stanford Chidge. This is the Chelsea Fancast. The title of tonight's show is Pathetic Chelsea <laughs> Fancast number 1126. And I'm joined by somebody who is never pathetic. Pathos is, a, is an alien word to him. Jonathan Kidd. Pathos. Pathos. Mm. Wasn't he? Wasn't it? Was, was one of the three musketeers? Yeah, Bathos was the other one, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, good. Pathos, Bathos. And they both used to wear Aramis aftershave. Oh, Chidge, you're on fire. Oh. I know. Ow! Ow! Anyway, uh, we've also got the absolutely fantastically bloody marvellous Dane Whittle. Uh, Dane, um, you know, uh, I, I, I came across something. I showed somebody the T-shirt, you know, the one we're doing with. Uh, actually, actually, funnily enough, ironically, it's modelled like on this. It's modelled mm -hmm. on this T-shirt. You know, that's that was the inspiration. So instead of European Cup winners, you're going to have a much better team on the T-shirt. It'll be the Chelsea Fancast team. And of course, Dane is our number nine. He is the number nine because he is D at D wit nine. And I was showing somebody a picture of this in the cock on uh, whenever it was last time I a Thursday it would have been. And they were going through it. They loved it. And they said, well, who, who, who's, who's your number? nine? I don't think we know him. So I think, I think this t-shirt could make you more, you know, better known and famous basically. Cause everybody looks at the number nine first. Yeah. The goal scorer, the one who would stand yeah. on the off line line with his hands on his hips, waiting for the ball to come to his feet. That was me. Yeah. 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 There we go. So, you know, you, hopefully the t-shirt will make you famous. I mean, uh, unfortunately the second thing they say is Chidge, why are you in the middle? Like in a very kind of de derogatory manner. And I like, I don't deserve to be. And I said, fuck off. I'm the midfield general yeah. and the player manager. Yeah. And the coach and the Uber yeah. Fuhrer. So fuck off. Yeah. I'm allowed to it's my my team. I'll play where I want to. My t-shirt. <laughs> exactly. We've got little cartoon uh, faces on the uh, on our names. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you've seen it. You've seen, seen it. it. Yeah. You have seen it. Do you want to do, yeah. do you want to have a, a see if I can like, dig it out? Dig it I out. Can't, no, I can't. I can't. I have no, to okay. it has to be a PDF, so I can't okay. do that. Uh never mind. Uh, you'll, you'll you've seen it before. I've seen it before. I was just fishing. No, no. You've got mate. You've got one of you and me. What more do you want? Don't tell me one just of you. <laughs> no, no Chidge. One of you on your own. Oh yeah, no. That I, I, I refuse to wear that one because I can't be seen in a bloody t-shirt. No, you mother. can't. You can't. You can't. No, no. But there you go. But they are lovely. A lot of people. When I showed people the images of stuff in the pubs, they were. Do you know what? That was their favourite one. Bizarrely, and I'm thinking you can't be serious. No, no, no. We love it. Anyway, enough of me waffling on. We've got a bit of. Uh, pluggery to do uh 
which uh, of course starts with this wonderful thing here, which of course is the CFC UK fanzine. Hurry up, it's only a pound. Uh, the world's greatest football fanzine. And I say that not just because I write for it, and so do many of the people who are on this show, to name a few, Dean uh, and uh, Mark Clayton, uh, Mark Worrell, of course. Uh, you know, there's a lot of us that, that write for the fanzine. Um, anyway, uh, the latest one's out now, the April edition, as you can see there. Uh, and, of course, the stall is open for business uh, every home game. Uh, and if you can't get it to the store, which is basically opposite Fulham Broadway Tube, uh, you just have to hear, listen out for the hurry up. It's only a pound and you'll see people armed with fanzines for sale for guess what? Only a pound. Now, if you can't get to games, do not worry. You can actually get these posted to you if you subscribe to the fanzine for a year. Uh, and that will cost you 20 quid if you're in the UK, 45 quid in Europe and 60 quid in the rest of the world. Uh, and you have to email fanzine at cfcuk.net. Uh, alternatively, if you don't want a hard copy, you can get a digital copy, uh, a PDF emailed to you. That will cost you six quid for a year or a pound each. And as I said, you can pay via PayPal. Uh, and if you get in there now, you'll get next year's subscription as well. So uh, it's a good time to do it. Now, the other thing, of course, that we always like to mention on the fan cast, of course, is the Chelsea Bitch Owners. That's right. Uh, if you own one of these, then it means that you will have a share of the freehold of the stadium. Uh, and what that will mean is that uh, you and about, I don't know, 15, 20,000 others who, who have these shares, me and all of us here have shares, uh, it means you will, get a, you will get a say. You will have a voice in whatever the club decides to do next with the stadium, whether they uh, want to rebuild it, uh, whether they want to relocate temporarily or move away permanently. Uh, none of this will happen without the agreement of the CPO because they own the pitch. Uh, so it's a very valuable thing to have. Um, it's not necessarily just a bunch of old uh, what uh, alcoholic yadars, I think is the expression. Luddite could be another one. Um, there's a mixed variety of opinions and views on the CPO. But it's democratic, you know, one share, one vote. So, you know, um, if they think it's a good idea to do what the club wants to do, then they'll agree. So it's no biggie. But you'll get a say. That's the important thing. You get a, you get a voice. And, who, who you know, who, who wouldn't want that? Uh, 120, 110 quid for an electronic share, 175 quid for a signed uh, share, well, signed by a player. I've got, I think we've got Frank Lampard up there. Um, uh, basically, to get in touch with the pitch owners, you can email them, comms at chelseapitchowners.com, uh, or you can follow them on Twitter at pitchowners. And uh, if you want to just go straight through and buy one off the website, it's chelseafc.com forward slash Chelsea hyphen pitch owners. All very simple. So there you go. I commend it to you, lovely people. Right. <laughs> time for us to get on with a bit of football. And, uh, you know, we've kind of been putting it off for a bit, but it's time to talk about Pochettino. Uh, I know JK's uh, got a lot of his post-match comments and press. So I, I did make a note of some of the things he said. But before we get into that, JK, um, I was quite intrigued by the change of formation, which seemed to be set up to uh, to match uh, Sheffield United. I'm not convinced it worked. I mean, it, the way I read it, it was three centre backs. I mean, nobody seemed to have this on all the apps and things. They're all saying we're playing four, two, three, one. Still, I, I think they're just fucking hopeless. They don't. Well, most of the time, we appeared to be playing three, didn't we? Well, I it thought was, we uh, were. I thought Cucurella was very high up the pitch most yeah, of the time. Yeah, yeah. Desazzi yeah. stayed back. He, play, he, um, he actually played. He, he played much more centre half, Desazzi. But then, but I, I thought I thought yeah. effectively. I I actually thought it was, you know, three, four, two, one. I think it was. Yeah. So effectively, you had. Uh, you know, Chaloba, Silva, Dizazi. Of course, we know that Silva likes to play in a black back three. So I think on paper, this made a lot of sense to me. Cucurella was playing as a wing back. Effectively, Madueke was too, which meant you had Fernando and Caicedo, Fernandez and Caicedo closer together, which has often been a problem that they're too far apart, certainly defensively, which is why teams walk through them. And then you had Gallagher and Palmer behind Jackson, effectively. But it was quite fluid. And I mean, you know, Neil was going, Neil Barner, who you mentioned earlier, was going on saying that Gallagher was actually playing playing on the wing half and the he, time. And he played, when the substitutions came, he, started, he was playing centre forward for a period. I know. Fuck Absolutely sake. bizarre. Didn't yeah, make any sense at all. No, but what happened was, it seemed to me, was that they, they played with the three, but then it changed to a four with Dissassi going to right back. 
um, because that's when he was given the ball frequently by Petrovic to play the ball down to Medweki. But he never got... Consequently, he didn't play as a proper fullback, overlapping fullback, because Medweki was playing that role. And Cucurella was constantly doing what he did for Brighton, actually, bless him. I think he's actually, he's, he's come up a bit, Cucurella, let's be honest. He's not the, the, the complete failure that he was last season. But he's, he, he's always running late into the box. The number of times he makes runs into the box, nothing happens whatsoever. So he's almost, beca- he is the huge overlapping fullback. In a sense, he's playing the way that Chilwell used to play. But Chilwell is, as you said, Dane, he's not... Um, He's not up for it at the moment. And uh, the bizarre thing with Chilwell of actually playing twice for England and then coming back with a bad, with a dead leg and then gets a virus. And that's the end of that. You just think, what? And he, he didn't play very well for England. He hasn't played well for us all season. Is this, is this, you know, will he be disappearing like several of the other players? And once again, when we, when we segue beautifully into what Poch said at the post, post game, I, I think there's the possibility if he, I think he feels he's still with there, that there's going to be a big change round, but I don't know how they're going to achieve it, but we'll get onto that in a minute. But, um, but it, tactically it, it seemed to be quite fluid that way, but it still doesn't make the midfield any stronger does it chidge whatever putting four in the midfield still doesn't make them stronger they still look look very porous it looks very easy to to get through them and jackson bless his cotton socks as i've said him a fan bite he's he, 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 that terrible moment where he, he did a wonderful turn got the ball and um ran into the penalty area for the return i think from cucarella and missed the ball completely when all he needed to do was tap in and you go well you've just been absolutely brilliant and then you've been completely shit all in the same move with yourself you did it and then it was back in there and you think he just it's too many of them i'm afraid i keep going on about this at this stage in their careers all right let's be fair look at the process they haven't played very much in the premier league they are not good enough and wouldn't be given an opportunity in other clubs. But, but due to the way the structure, all this has happened, they're playing week after week, and we see the same bollocks. Week but after. you would expect, and I, I think this lies at the heart, it'd be interesting to hear what Dane says about this, but this this, this is, I think this is what lies at the heart of my despondency at the moment. And, I, and I'll say it again, I have really been quite miserable since the end of that game, uh, which is not like me. Um, what, what I... And I think, you know, we, we started the show saying, you know, it's another case of one step forward, two steps back. I know that they're young. We, we've taken that on board. We know that they're going to do daft things. But what you expect to see is a level of progression. And I am not seeing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, well, that's when, what Poch is supposed to do as a manager, isn't he? He's supposed to make them progress. But it's well, to, yeah, but what... they, forget Poch for a minute. They are yeah. not progressing as players yeah. because they do the same mistakes week in, week out. Yeah. And they raise their game when it's a big fucking team. And then they turn up with a bloody cigar against Burnley and Sheffield United. And they get caught with their pants down again. They're not progressing. Dane, what do you reckon? Absolutely. It's, uh, I, unless I'm wrong, I think we was only sort of like embarrassed by Liverpool, all the other top sides we've actually played decent against. Uh, I think we were embarrassed by the bottom sides. We were embarrassed by Everton away. Yeah. Where we were dreadful. We were embarrassed by Man United away. Where Middlesbrough. We were dreadful. Middlesbrough we were embarrassed by, yeah. I think, obviously, just going to obviously Chich's point about, you know, we, we do play decently against the top sides. Uh, absolutely right. You know, I, bags of different emotions this season with this team, with this, you know, the coaching set up, you know, trying to get... Uh, Moments you're giving him the benefit of doubt and you think, OK, you know, does he need more of a say in, in signings? You know, is it the fact that I know, you know, she disagreed with me like that they shouldn't be tired. You know, mentally, are they tired just because, you know, they're, they're just not used to this exposure? You know, as I said, constantly playing the same free, constantly playing the same striker. Uh, recent times, obviously, Desassi as well, constantly played. They're just all mentally knackered. I don't know. You're just you're just trying to come up with things to make you try and feel better. To try make and it make sense. Make it make sense, and then to think for next season and, and what we can do in the summer, and 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 potentially, you know, J.K. just said, you know, potentially we could have another quite a big, big, bigger uh, open and exit sort of, of, of coming on. You think what again? What do we have to go for another season where they're being bedded in and and the famous P word? Are we allowed to mention the process? It's uh, <laughs> it's. it's it's funny because we say so many things and we and 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 we don't actually get anywhere because we, we we don't see anything we haven't seen anything we don't understand it all it's 
but we sort of like come together to make ourselves like feel better as, as, as you said Chidge you know you was in a bit of a grumpy mood and I remember just being a fan of this show years ago and and I would enjoy the shows more funnily enough when we had when we did lose because I would have something to share it with and 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 make me feel better it's it's uh it's baffling. It's baffling. Well, I mean, if 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 I mean, you know, about the progression thing, I, I think it, it it you know, my my feelings, J.K. might be warped by by my misery at at, 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 at at you know dropping points against the relegated side, basically. But in in all honesty, you know, we haven't we haven't lost uh, a Premier League match since the fourth of February, which is now two months ago when we lost 4-2 to Wolves and that we well, that was preceded by getting dubbed 4-1 by Liverpool where we were we were pretty humbled in that um so you know we we've been on it we are on a good run you know that 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 is that is true there have been wins and draws but we're on a good run but if you drill a little deeper you know that was a ter- I mean you know you, you shouldn't be drawing 2-2 against Sheffield United particularly when you go up after 10 minutes you shouldn't be drawing against Burnley at home when we took the lead there uh, well, well, Brentford, Brentford, the Brentford, Brentford was Brentford the game. shit as well, wasn't it? Brentford, another example, exactly. And they, they, had, they had their second team out. Their second team had, was out, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. There, there needs to be context. Drawing but one one with City away was a good, a good draw. Yes. And the other, and the others, we all won. So it's it's difficult. You know, there's nuance to this. I think that you know that is a fact that we have not lost since February the fourth. But you know. You've got to drill down a little bit deeper, I think. And I just see them going back. You know, it's the one step forward, two steps backwards again. What has this got to do with Pochettino, do you think, JK? And I know you want to talk about his presser and stuff because he had some very interesting comments to make, didn't he? Well, yeah, he did. But I, I'm, when I keep calling about this clown business, it was because he was riled in the previous press conference at saying that he uh, he, um, he wasn't he wasn't um, leaping around the touchline during the game like other managers and he said i'm not a clown we're not in the circus um i analyze i i assess what's going on i need to concentrate this is why you don't see much emotion from me you see the odd moment where he goes and speaks to the third to the fourth official about something or um objects but most of the time he's sitting down and the trouble is is that because the team isn't doing very well um you just you just put it down to lack of passion However, so therefore, when he beat, we beat United 4-3 and he goes completely berserk on the touchline, we think, oh, this is it. Even he is now showing his his um, his emotions for the team. And yet we're back to square one with the Sheffield United game. He doesn't do much. He does. He just sits down and apparently he's analysing all the time. But then he makes ridiculous decisions towards the end. And what, the two decisions he made for the substitutions with Badia Shield and, um, and, and Cassidy, were they to waste time? Um, was it just to because hang on? He was trying to hang on two yeah, one against yeah, yeah. Sheffield bloody United. Well, it's supposed to disrupt the momentum, isn't it? And the, uh, lots of the time, people make substitutions. It doesn't cut the ice anymore that because because they just add everything on now. They they've learnt that they they know they they're 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 up with that. The refs. That's one thing they do get right most of the time, except for the odd individual who just gives four minutes when there's been fifteen minutes. You know, people falling over and having injuries on the pitch, but um, so consequently, um, uh, uh, um, that was a uh, an area of game management that was completely ridiculous towards the end. And he brings on the man who doesn't jump, uh, and poor old Cassidy, who must think be thinking, "What on earth did I leave Leicester for?" Because I thought he would have been given a go, didn't we? Agree- talk well, about he, he has been today. twice, and every time we've conceded thirty yeah, seconds, yeah, no, I mean, largely yeah. because of him. Given a go, exactly. Given a go, because he doesn't. His, his pressing isn't great. Get, but no, given a go uh, earlier on in in, in the game. No, no, start him. I I, I start would have him, happily yeah. started him instead yeah. of Caicedo. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So we don't have the uh, um, the 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 ricks that are going on. But um, uh, I, I just think his 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 second half of the match game management is is faulty every time because he just chooses the wrong subs. Um, well, so, he didn't do that the other night against United. He chose exactly the right sub. Uh, what, when he brought Madweke on? Yeah. Yeah, well, I suppose. And, and he was rewarded, was he, with with being... Um, yeah, but was how much of that was a kind of fluke for bringing him on? Or did he look at the game and think, no, this I is, think I, this I is think, what is needed? I think Connor alluded to it as well in the post-match presser. He said, I'm, I'm right, glad right, he... Right. I, I'm glad... I'm not, not necessarily I'm glad he took me off, but I understood why he took me off because... At the stage the game was at, where we were chasing the game, Nonny will take people on and he will create something. And it's not my game, basically. Okay. So well, well, he, he, he got that right, but we're not saying he got Burnley right, are we? Because uh, no. Um, it, well, also he managed not to get them to to look competitive, which to me is is. 
I mean, the exactly, sorry, managers look, do. Surely, can you not rile a team up? Can you not say yeah, to them at exactly. half time, come on, guys, you've got exactly. to really get stuck in here. Exactly. What, instead of which, what happens in every second half is they come out limper than they did in the first and, half. And it happened Brentford again. was a perfect example, as was, happened again. As was Burnley. And, and yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. the opposite was Palace, where we started off so badly. Then Three Little Birds was played, and then we suddenly the first came out. We did We're that. better motivational <laughs> managers <laughs> than Podges. Yeah. Can I wander through this? Um, Before you do uh, that, you, you've, you've, yes, you can. But uh, you've, you've hit a really, a really good point there. And if I was going to level, you know, a criticism at Pochettino, I'm not, I'm not so sure about the whole tactics and, and subs thing myself. Uh, I'd, I'm not a qualified coach, yada, yada, yada. But... The minimum requirement for me is that he can, he gets their mentality and their attitude right. That is what a manager does. I know I've been a fucking manager. You got to get your people performing at the top of their game. You got to get their attitude and their mentality right. And he doesn't do that. That's the point. They come out limp dicked at the beginning of a game, and they come out even limper dicked at the second half. That's on the manager, surely. Surely, the, the number of times manage. we've seen we've seen stereotypical views of managers abusing players at half time for not being involved. Christ Almighty, they're lucky I'm not in the bloody dressing room, mate. It wouldn't be just be hair dryers, that's for sure. Chuck a fucking ice box at them. <laughs> Can I just wander through this poach? Yeah, I've calmed down now. Shall, <laughs> shall I? I mean, I, I, it, it, there were some pretty obvious things in this the post thing where he talks about. Um, uh, uh, you know, one of the questions, first question, has twice been winning, and he says he's very frustrated. But he actually said it was a fair result. We didn't create enough or show the capacity to be solid. I'm um, not conceding as the most painful uh, situation. How do you how do you put that put that right? Um, that doesn't make sense. Not conceding. Uh, but he, he's, what he said is the most painful situation, basically. And then in put silver, um, uh, and he says in the first part of the season we were a bit more solid, but we didn't create too much and didn't score, which I, I slightly would put down to silver playing because I think that he's had great relevance in the first part of the season. We're not cl uh, clinical now, um, uh, and and uh, we, uh, we were not clinical, and now we are. Um, uh, we're conceding more. Yes, we've established that. The difficult thing is to find the balance. We know that team not showing the last few months the capacity to be solid. We need to be particularly, particularly solid. We have another game Monday. We know that. Um, uh, Liam asked about um, adapting the system. Yes, it's a truly different system. I tried to find uh, um, uh, solutions. Solutions. So in other words, he was saying the team that played against Sheffield was a different solution he was looking for. That's why he played De Sassi at right back. Well, I don't think I don't think Gusto was injured. I think he was just rested, which, of course, you just see the difference because Gusto's been one of the successes of the season. Um, uh, he's trying to find more solutions to be solid. This was his word. Um, then he was asked about late goals. Uh, what are the problems? He said it's a new he went back to talking about them being a young side, which seems to be his major excuse now. The new team profiles, learning, process to build a team, take time. Time is not a magic thing. And he then said something bizarre. We talk about three to five years to build a team. So what? He's thinking he's going to be around for three to five years, is he? And that we're going to be watching this shit for three to five years, are we? OK. Anyway, um, yep. he, then, he then waffled a bit and made no sense at all, which seems to be the kind of default he goes into when he needs to think a bit. And he just said, it's a normal process. We need to accept this. Um, now, here he did something which I thought was very interesting indeed. He said, also at the end of the season, now this we're watching here, we've got um, Rich Moneymakers, who I don't know who that is, Rich, on the on the chat there, is saying that he's getting fed up according to a source that he has. Well, this makes great sense because indeed he says, also at the end of the season, we need to analyse the squad and see what we are missing. People to provide what we are seeing today um, improving next season. Now, he did this a bit earlier on in the season when he was disgruntled with the team. and But this is the first time he's been saying, I, I need different players. And then the question was, I spy. I seem, it seems the players put together um, aren't very good at scrapping, spy said, which is a kind of typical spy um, question. Gets to the nub of things, basically saying. Not wrong. They, they, absolutely. They don't get stuck in. And he put said, it's hard to compete. We struggle to compete in these type of games. Well, why? Why isn't he telling them, you've got to compete, boys? Come on, get in there, compete. Get, get stuck in. We're not seeing that. Um, and he said uh, it was sloppy. Um, we need to identify the... 
this, he said it again. We need to identify the profile of the player. We are learning. It's about making the right decision. And I think this is all about they've made some mistakes. I think he, he appreciates now with some of these players, they have made mistakes. Um, I need to be working with the staff, the sporting directors and owners. It's not easy to improve. Then this is the first time we are hearing him say some of these guys aren't good enough, which I thought was really, really interesting. Um, he was then asked about was Silver uh, still in the project? And he said at the moment, we're not telling talking about players' futures. And uh, once again, he's always been very... Uh, he never seems to want to talk about that. He doesn't doesn't make have any any view of it. Um, uh, we need to the club need to talk about it and agree. We do not discuss. Um, I was asked about, uh, whether they were exhausted. Of course, they're tired. We've got a. Um, uh, uh, um, the, it, it's a, it's about we've um, we've got a wonderful. Then he said, of course they're tired. However, we have a wonderful training center, physio. Um, uh, cafeteria marvelous uh it then it is about to be competitive so he sort of palmed it away and he said this here i'm a 52 year old you identify very quickly if the team are ready to compete or not so maybe this group is not mature enough to compete every single game it's a process takes time to build a strong team strong quality strong versatility compete Asked about Palmer, not injured. He was tired. Um, uh, and uh, Carney, he was said Carney's a very good player and can do the job. And then I, um, that was about the end of it and they went off it. But I just thought that was very interesting how he was prepared to say some of these players aren't up to it uh, and that he thinks it will take three to five years. Well, will he still be involved in this setup? Or is this something that they've already talked about and he's not willing to... Uh, admit it that they've actually been chatting about who cuts the mustard and which ones make the same errors the very fact we see the players make the same errors not be competitive surely you know we as we've always said w if we're able to see it the manager certainly sees what's going on and who isn't good enough so uh, yeah. and and and, and I, I keep saying this at the moment it's like it's very arsenal the low the bar is so low that we're saying oh he did a bit better this week when in reality they're not good enough for Chelsea. No, exactly. Well, they're certainly not good of good enough for Chelsea past. What worries yeah, me yeah. is that people don't realise this will be the norm now. Yes. Yeah, that's that's the real danger here. Yeah. You know, because yeah. we've got because we have a new ownership and a new way of doing things, they don't know what the norm is. Uh, so this for them is the norm. I mean, I'm sure um, you know they're not idiots. That they they want to be winning stuff. This is not good enough for Clear Lake. It, it'll affect their their potential for profit, it, it will disgruntle their shareholders and their investors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not acceptable for them. I, I, I totally get that. But culturally, the norm at Chelsea was a, was a particular standard of player and, and we don't have those standards. Like I said earlier on, I mean, Chaloba, if, 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 if the things had remained the same, I'm sure Trevor would have just been a squad player. He wouldn't have been a first teamer. You know, I mean, if you look at some of the players we've had in his, you know, in recent history, you know, in this long, I mean, I, 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 I hate to be down on on Moises and uh, Enzo again, but I'm, you know, I'm sorry. I mean, Enzo looked great when he turned up last year. He was full of energy, vim and vigor, buzzing around like an angry wasp. This is what you want to see. Clearly, had a lot of quality. He's he's a shadow of that player, and I mean. You know the, the the two linchpins of the team are the are the midfielders. I think. I mean, I know you know. I argue with Kerry all about this. You know, yes, God, those bloody strikers are the most important. But he would say that, wouldn't he? <laughs> you know, if you don't win the battle in midfield, you don't win the game. Invariably, it's so 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 important. If you don't if you don't have people who can win the ball back and set it up, or, or get you out of the shit, or protect your defenders, then you're going to lose more games and you're going to win. So these two guys are absolutely fundamental. And they're not they're not fit to 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 lace up Kante's boots, Mikel's boots, Makaleli, even Jorginho, you know, I would I would I would even venture. You know, I so I don't know. I, I don't know I don't know what it is about. I mean, I you see I, I can't work out whether you know these two guys, you know, Enzo has a track record, he's he's won a World Cup. Moises, you know, had only he only had a year at Brighton. So I, I think the jury's probably you know, a lot more out on him, I think. But he looks a shadow of the player he, he was at Brighton. And I've been reading a lot of stuff saying, well, you know, it's because of the manager. 
you know, because he doesn't play her in the right positions. But if the manager's not giving the fucking ball away 20 times in a game, is he? Or not winning nine out of 10 duels. So I don't know. Um, the thing, that, Dane, we were talking about this earlier, weren't we? And it's a good time to bring this back in, really. And uh, thank, by the way, thanks for that, JK. That was like, really useful to hear all of that. And I agree, very fascinating to hear him actually start moaning, really, about the situation. But uh, he mentioned about the players being tired, didn't he? Um, now, I mean, I, I, I can't see this myself, Dane. Uh, you know, I mean, they're young. You know, they're not playing in Europe. How? Why on earth are they tired? And we, we did have a good chat about this before, but you, you, you think that there is a good reason why they're tired, right? I think they're mentally tired. I just yeah. think they're, they're not being protected enough. You know, as I said, I've said many times tonight, the same three midfielders, 90% of our of our uh, games this season are playing. Uh, again, Jackson is, is you know, he's still a young lad, you know, who, who who is not used to this, you know, that microscope that, that hits you when you play for a big team like Chelsea. Uh, whether he's good enough or not, you know, I saw stats at the weekend comparing him to Havertz and, you know, Havertz is getting a lot of praise at the moment and Jackson isn't. Uh, I just think that, as I said, they're not being protected enough. They're not being rotated enough. You know, there's not enough senior, just professionals around. You know, there's a massive imbalance of of, of signings. You know, when you was mentioning Enzo and Casado, them, I was trying to work out. Okay, were they bought by two different departments though? Wasn't Enzo bought by Bowley and Co? But Casado was bought when we had the directors in. I don't know. I couldn't get, get the timelines up. It would make sense considering he came from Brighton. When we've employed people, you know, I heard that, uh, you know, Egg Valley just wanted to get one over on Arsenal and it didn't even know much about Mudrick. Uh, just wanted to jump Arsenal to to sh send, uh, you know, shockwaves through the game. I think uh, at the time, though, Mudrick was considered one of the great prospects because well, he'd, he'd taken Real Madrid to the cleaners and he'd scored goals he did yeah. in the in the Champions League. So I think... They were you, you were on pretty sturdy ground if you put in a bid for him, you know. Almost like Casado, his experience in the game is very small, and uh, you know, no more than eighteen months. Uh, it's that—that that is what I've come up with. They're just—they're they're not protected enough. They haven't been looked after enough because the terrible imbalance in the squad. You know, we, we talked about players being injured earlier, whether it's Chilwell, Colwell, and we can throw in Lavia, Unkunku, Leslie. God knows what's going on with them three, but we're, we're not going to see them again this season. Uh, we'll probably be lucky to see them at the start of next season because no doubt something will happen in the summer uh, with fitness. It's just, there's just a massive imbalance in there. And until they can get, it's funny because, you know, it was only like 18 months ago, a year ago, we we're all saying, okay, we'll take being temp, we'll take doing this if you can just see progression. Uh, and, well, we're, we're obviously getting, I wish of seeing us temp, but we're just, no, no progression, massive imbalance, and the players just look bewildered I mean, like us a bit. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really, I mean, just to kind of conflate all of these things that I've, I've written down here, you know, it, it's so frustrating. I mean, they, they were, I mean, Nonny mentioned it, didn't he, JK? But if we'd have won that game like we should have done, there's no way we should have drawn that game. We went ahead after 10 minutes to a team that's shipping goals for fun. If we'd have won that game, we'd have been on 46 points. We'd have been one point behind Arsenal. Uh, sorry, Arsenal, if only at the moment. One point behind Newcastle United with a game in hand. Two points behind West Ham with two games in hand. And uh, three points behind Man United with a game in hand, who were in six. I mean, we were, you know, we you could smell European qualification. It just kind of makes me think, JK, that this lot are allergic to European qualification. Because every time we get close, I mean, every every time we, we have a show, we go, oh, oh, we're still in it, guys. We're still in it. Then the next week's like, no, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. And it, it just drives you up the wall. And, uh, I mean, words almost fail me. I mean, the, the reality is, it's, it's like back to the 90s, isn't it, JK? You know, when we would, like, beat a good team and then lose to a shit one. Well, in fact, Judge, that's what used to happen in the 60s as well. I remember my, really? dad, my dad telling me exactly that. When which, I was, which bit of the 60s? The very early start of the Before 60s. we got promoted? Yes, yeah, when I was about 20. It was um, uh, when I was, because uh, I was born in 1937. And um, and I'm um, what does that make me? There's no time. way you were born in 1937. I'm... 
surely 1927. Oh, Chidge, thank you. <laughs> Wanker. <laughs> That's more like it. Till see ya. We're in a boys to set up a light. Hey, who's the one to set them a light? Chelsea. Um, who it's a gorda. Uh, he's a chance from my youth, everybody listening. Do you know what? I actually sang in the United match when Fernandes went down for the 17th time. Looked like he was shot. I actually got up and said, hit him on the head. Hit him on the head. Hit him on the head with a baseball bat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They all looked at me like I was insane. <laughs> ah, fantastic. Um, somebody on here called Ollie. I've failed to uh, has asked, can he? Uh, he's missed the beginning and he'd like to listen to it. But he could go back on YouTube, can't he, and look at it. Yeah, if you listen to the start, that's I've missed the start. Yes, Ollie Garbutt. Ollie, I love it to see you, Ollie. Thanks for listening to the show and looking at the show. Yeah, you can just go on to YouTube and look at it from the beginning. Yeah. YouTube, you? YouTube, Facebook, YouTube, and Facebook. Uh, we also do it as a podcast. Amazingly enough, Been you can it download everywhere. it, and it's on the on the website. Yeah. Acast, Spotify, Acast. all these Apple. things, all these yeah. things, Ollie. All uh, good I, I, I attempted, I attempted to send a re reply up there, but it wouldn't. It said this comment has failed to post to Chelsea fancast. Yeah, you, yeah. I, was it the Twitter one or the, the not Twitter YouTube or uh, I don't know why it's happened to me before. I don't know whether you're allowed to mention something that's on it. I don't know. Anyway, um, uh, what were we Chelsea. Saying? You're not allowed to mention Chelsea. You're not allowed to mention that word. You get a censor comes in. Yeah, it's a banned exactly. word. Yeah, yeah. Was it was uh, it wanker? I haven't put wanker down there. Oh, anyway. it's probably me being rude, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Back to the nineties. Yeah, it is very. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. The moment, it was the beginning of the sixties. That used to be the case. That used to be the mm. case. It was. Mm. Um, uh, they they were known. In fact, this business about calling them the unpredictables. They were known as the unpredictables then. I remember my dad using that phrase, and it was they would always play well against top teams and lose against the bottom teams. And it was mm. there wasn't the same analysis of tactics, and, and it, it seemed to be just effort once again. They were up. For the bigger matches and not so for the lower matches and it just seemed to be would, would become tactically inept but easily easily um brushed off the ball that was one of the big things as well um so uh it, it seems to me players attitude it's so to do with players attitudes but as as potch has just been saying perhaps potch is now saying he's highlighted the players who are not the ones to go forward with the club at the moment but he was being political for nine months then it, well indeed indeed he uh, Perhaps he was. They've had a meeting to suggest no, just go with the process to see what happens. And he's now finally said, "Well, actually, this isn't working." Or, or is he out of order? Does that mean that he's then going to be, he's, he's going to be given the given the tin? Well, if, if that if they want a yes man, then then yes. I mean, Chris makes a very good point here. Before I I move on to a point that I want to make, uh, lovely Chris Castley. Hope you're well, Chris. Uh, there you go. Difference with the side in the early 90s is expectations were very different. We hadn't spent a fortune on bang average players. And I would also add, Chris, we were used to going up and down fairly much like a yo-yo. Because, I mean, I think if you go from something like 78 to nine to 1990, we'd been, I think that's three relegations. Am I right, JK? Yep. We went, we went down in 79. Yeah. Well, we went down in 76, didn't we? 75, 76, yep. Yep. 79. Back up with, with McCready. Yeah. No, well, but back up with McCready, then we went back down again. Yeah, when he was we uh, went, given the given yeah, the start, back up, yeah. back up with Eddie, uh, with with John Neal. Yeah, and then we went down with Hollins or with Bobby. Was it Hollins or Bobby Campbell? Uh, Hollins Campbell came in afterwards, didn't he? So what's that? Three times or two yeah. times? Three. Yeah. So you know, we were exactly Chris. We were used to that. So it was a very different world, wasn't it? Um, anyway, look, the point I wanted to make was. Um, this is all leading to something rather interesting. Uh, we've got how many games left? Have we got about 10 games left? Eight I'm games. Reckon, left. Yeah. Eight yeah. games left. It was eight. Uh, okay. Eight plus the semi final, plus maybe the final. So we've got 12 games left in the season. And then we're going to have arguably the most important summer this club has seen. Well, I don't know. For a long, 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 long time. Because this is going to go either one of two ways, isn't it? You know, either either the owners are going to stick their, you know, heels into the turf and say, we're not for changing. Or as Margaret Thatcher once said, you turn if you want to. This lady is not for turning. This bowley is not for turning. Um, we'll see, won't we? I mean, they may stick their feet in the mud and, and say, no, we're not changing it. This is what we want to do. Uh, Maurizio, if you don't like it, you're off, son. 
and then they get another another lamb to the slaughter, or they will they will acknowledge that they've made some mistakes and that they're not moving on very quickly, and they will get rid or try and get rid of some of the the guys who are clearly not good enough and replace them with some experienced players who can help us get to the next stage. I mean, you know, they've bought enough young players. I mean, there are plenty of these kids that are very young and are on loan. I mean, if they actually got some stability and some consistency in this club, got us competing again. I mean, bloody Thomas Tuchel, you know, God love him. You know, he he made this clear from the get-go, didn't he, when he joined them as a manager. He said, all, all, you know, the most important thing for Chelsea Football Club is that we are always competing. Yes, it's nice to win everything, but we have to be competing. We have to compete with Liverpool. We have to compete with City. We have to compete with Arsenal. All of these all of these clubs, we've got to compete with them. We might not win. We might not get over the line, but we've got to compete with them. We're not even doing that at the moment. You know, we're not even competing with Sheffield fucking United at the moment. So, you know, it'll be really interesting to see which which direction this goes. And I think it could be one of the most important summers we've had at this club in a generation, JK. Um, I wonder whether they're going to be looking at each player dependent on their abilities or whether it, uh, how much money they're going to get them to get them out of the uh, any FFP problems. Um, but um, uh, I'm confused as to where uh, all the uh, the lone loanees come into this, like uh, Zayek and Lukaku and um, oh, shit, I forgot about Zayek. Uh, who's the other one? Uh, and Kepa. Uh, because they'll get if they manage to sell them off. We still got Victor Moses on loan and <laughs> Winston Bogart. <laughs> They'll be there somewhere, yeah, <laughs> turning up, getting their wage, and leaving the following day to go and bask by the pool somewhere in Tenerife. Um, uh, it'll be interesting just to go through and see what the uh, who there is, you know, who, who might be on their way. Um, who we would decide we don't think is good enough and should be uh, elbowed and what they'll get for them. Do they make a loss on them if they're going to get rid of some of them who haven't come up to scratch? I mean, it, 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 we, we have to remember, not not that this is is, is making an excuse for Poch, it's clear that Nkunku was one of the, the marquee signings who was supposed to take us forward. And and he was going to be the talisman up front, or you know, I don't think he played particularly up front, but he was he was you know he scored so many goals in the Bundesliga last year, and uh, and it hasn't happened, and so we've been left with a misfiring Jackson and uh, um, and a completely uh, um, out of it Sterling. So uh, you could you can there is there is some um, uh, there is an, a, an opportunity to give to give uh, Poch a way out of this, but. Um, uh, at the same time, if he's coming in and saying, "Right, I now, um, I now want experience in these positions. I don't think we're good enough," um, it will be intriguing to see how many players leave the club who haven't worked from the initial purchase uh, and for less than their from their the price they were paid. We paid for them, or just some that he thinks aren't good enough that it, that are going to fulfil the FPP and allow us some money to buy others. And as you say, Chidge, there are all these little dotted youths who are apparently playing very well elsewhere or not the case and even this boy um what's his what, what's his name from mari hutchinson yeah uh, yeah yeah hutchinson's been doing very well for ipswich indeed um and uh whether they have a relevance and also the boy from the under 21s who scored 24 goals or something who's supposed to be uh fantastic and he may be on the the fringes and whether Cass cassidy has a has a role to play being a year older or or is it that the you know, we we they say, well, it's actually some of these players, despite not having done very well this year, we're going to give them another chance. Or do, who is going to make this? Obviously, the sporting director, they're already going to say, some of you we don't ever think will be good enough. And we cannot give you this chance that we keep using as an excuse for the rest of the, that. They're all young and it'll all come together sometime. It, some of them, in somebody has to make a view and have an opinion that some of these players will never make it and they'll be on their bikes. Mm. I mean, it's almost like you know they've 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 made Chelsea into a trialist slash academy team, Dane, doesn't it? Like this year's been an experiment to see which youngsters will make it and which won't, which is criminal if you think about it. Yeah, and 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 dragged Strasbourg along with it as well. Uh, 
Yeah, it is. It, you know, it's funny that state that, that that quote you just said. It could be our most in, in, important summer ever. I think we've used that quite a few times over the last five I, years. I, I think it really is, though, isn't it? Mm, yeah, as, if you know, we carry often, on in the same vein, then it, I can't see it getting any better. No, they. You just hope, as I was, I was trying to allude to earlier. You know, whether it was Bowley or Egg Valley signings, or now the recent ones were actually the directors. You know, hopefully they can use some intelligence, get together, because I can't see Pochettino going, whether I, I I think that's right or wrong, that's irrelevant. I've just I've accepted, I think, I believe he's staying. Uh, hopefully they can get together. Hopefully they can come up with something. And if you can see that, you know, we make a few signings and, and at least two of them are experienced spine-like signings, then that's a start. You can think they're all on the same page. Uh, it gives, definitely gives us all something to talk about, doesn't it? So. Well, it, it does, Dane. And I was thinking that on a, on a show in the not too distant future, I should we should be doing a massive shoot, shag, or marry. I think with the whole squad. You know, we've done this mm. before. I remember, ironically, we did this before the owners came in, and then then they did exactly what we wanted them to do, which was to get rid of a lot of the dead weight that we had at the club. Yeah, no, we did. Yeah, we did. I hold my we hands did. up. Absolutely. And I actually wanted Pochettino in. I wanted him before Potter. I sort of like put aside the Spurs side of it. And I thought he would be the best for us at this time. Uh, it's funny how you mentioned doing future shows. You know, I've listened, you know, like when I, when I'm, I listen like other people do. Uh, and you mentioned the owners quite a lot. And I always thought a good show would be to have uh, Tony on. who's always been very good with with putting what he believes their side is across and also brian wolf who is also very knowledgeable about the owners that would be a good show because sometimes it is good to have a sort of like an unbiased opinion of the owners uh that just that just come off my head off. <laughs> no no <laughs> yeah, but we we love brian it's about time we did have him on but it, it annoyingly brian's working when we do the show which is uh, a bit difficult unless he's over here watching a game and i don't think he's been over for a while I mean, it kind of leads in beautifully to really where I, I, I kind of wanted to, to wrap the show up, Dane. So well done you for being such a genius. Uh, that There's a side of me that just says, well, you know, shouldn't shouldn't we just be more patient? I mean, you know, shouldn't we just be more patient? But the trouble is when you're faced with this up and down, up and down, up and down, it's just so bloody difficult, isn't it, JK? It, it it is so difficult because of the successful seasons we've had and the fact that we are supposedly an elite club and this is why um blue co clear lake came in and bought us because they wanted part of that so um unfortunately we're bound to be making criticisms related to our um assessment of the team as a as an as a world class elite club i'm afraid and uh, uh, uh and I'm not convinced that Poch came in and realised how difficult it was going to be because I thought he'd have done better by now. Um, I'd have thought he'd have there'd have been a uh, an arc in the season where he'd have got them playing better or well, got, yeah. got them playing in a way that um, uh, allowed them to to uh, give of their best instead of which we're seeing some appalling performances and then, as we say, with some brilliant performances and just seems to be down to effort and mindset which is just well i do think that's on the manager for me that's yeah for me that is arguably the most you know the most i mean look if you if you if you just go back to when you know we we swapped uh Mourinho for uh sorry we swapped ranieri for Mourinho, and we all knew we were all there we all thought we're going to win the title this season why because we knew that Mourinho had such a rare gift for motivating people to getting inside their head and improving their mentality to make them into winners. He wasn't, he wasn't a tactical genius. You know, he wasn't Pep Guardiola. He just used to, you know, he used to, he used to stand, you know, he, he would like let the opposition have the ball so that the players could get a rest. He put the right players in the right positions and he, and he, you know, he he motivated them and he made them believe. So a lot of this is 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 kind of mentality and man management. For me, that's a, a minimum requirement of a manager. You know, yeah, okay, they have to be good at tactics and all the rest of it, and be able to change a game in 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 in, uh, in game management, as you were saying earlier on, J.K. And they have to know, you know, 
they have, I mean, Mourinho was also an absolute master at uh, snuffing out the opposition. So he he obviously really understood how to how to out tactic uh, the opposition. But then again, you know, he, he quite often did that by putting ten men behind the ball. You know, he was not a tactical genius, but he was an absolutely imperious man manager. Interesting. How often have we seen Poch do something to change the game to our advantage? Very rarely. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I will quote the Madueki substitution from yeah. the other week. Yeah. But I can't think of many other no. substitutions that have done that. I mean, Not one even of the most... Tactically, tactically. Yeah, but I, I haven't. But then, you know, you, you would know better than me because you're... It's, I mean, I cannot... I mean, I, I had to ask the bloke sitting next to me at the United match, which would, which was uh, Anthony and which was uh, Simple Jack, because I can't actually see that far anymore. So you know, I'm the, I'm, there's no there's no chance of me figuring out a, 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 some sort of strategic or tactical switch in the game. But I mean, look, th this feeds into to what we were saying about this arguably being one of the most important summers the club has had, because one of the forks in the road, it, it seems to be inextricably linked. You know, change of direction. Um, keep Poch and change the direction so that he, he can have something to work with or get rid of Poch and stay the same as we are and get some other mug to do it. I I, I think that's how it's going to play out. It's going to be one of those things. And, and I, I have a suspicion that they might go, nah, Poch, nah, we're doing it our way. We'll just get somebody else to do it. And I mean, to be really honest, they, they have a case. They have a case to, to, to make because – you know, they if I'm if I'm them, I'm saying, well, sorry, mate. You know, that's what we pay you the big bucks for. We pay you to make this lot better, and you haven't done it. So there's no use you complaining to us saying, oh, I need better players and more players and this, that, and the other. We get we said to you when you came in, this is what you're going to have to deal with. You said that you could make them better. You haven't. So if you don't like it, fuck off. So <laughs> it'll be deserby then. <laughs> Mate, I, I, you know, fucking Sam Allardyce, you know, who I, I don't know. I mean, I just, I don't know. I don't know, JK. This is the most galling thing. We have no idea what is going to happen, but it's an important summer and it's going to go one or two ways, I think. But I think that, I think that we are in for a long old road. I personally I, think he will stay because I think they were aware of uh, the owners. They've got all these little sleepers, all these little youngster low low knees that they've got that are going to come in but they don't know shit i know but that's but no they but don't I, know they don't know i, I know but i'm what saying that, for these fucking I, players but that would be a reason why the club will think oh we'll keep pochettino because all these other little players are coming through and he but can, they he don't can mold know. them in you know i don't they don't i mean they bought half of these players they bought half the ones that we think aren't good enough yes you know, they, they don't value the ones that are good enough. I mean, what you should be doing right now is you should be making, you know, building the team around Palmer. He's clearly a generational talent. I mean, his figures say it. I mean, for yes. fuck's sake, he's had a better debut season than Hazard had. And I'm not saying he's Eden Hazard, but, you know, the stats bear out what we see on the pitch. He is a generational talent. He is the type of player that you build a team around. He has some moments, Chidge, when I was watching him very specifically, because he is a great player, where he plays balls through that um, it's, it's hullet like They're not the the others aren't aware what they're, they're supposed not, to be they're doing. They're not good enough it. to be able they're to even know what he's trying to do. He, he, he's great at these little chips, but his his vision of just being able to find a little uh, gap for somebody with a pass through, and they're not up to it. They're not, you know. And we're talking about Sterling and him being tuned, but Ster if Sterling's on the end of one of his passes, he's rarely. Up, he's really I think he's been getting frustrated recently over the last uh, say, six oh, to eight. Cole, I think he's well. trying to do too much. You can see, you know, the amount of times. And this is listen. I, I'm not one to criticise Cole Palmer, but a few times he's he's looked and he's just thought, "Sod it, I'll shoot myself." Deflection off, and we're getting hit on a counter attack. Uh, I don't think he believes much in the players around him. Uh, and I think he looks frustrated, but he's, you know, he's dragging us through games. Certainly. He is. He is indeed. I feel for him, but uh, I don't think we any of us have. I don't think we've got an answer yet. Uh, that's for sure. I mean, all all I will say in conclusion, uh, this is football. Twas ever thus. It is the hope that kills you, isn't it, Dane? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, many have said on this show before. You know, don't let uh, ninety minutes of football in spoil spoil a good day out of of of, of spending time with friends and family and. 
I'm actually a lot better at the game rather. I'm worse watching it at home. I can't seem to let go of that frustration. But when you're out and you've gone to the pub and met with people and go afterwards, you can, for some reason, it, it makes it easier to deal with. It does indeed. And funnily enough, in spite of uh, being a bit miserable tonight, I have cheered up thanks to the company of these <laughs> lovely gentlemen. But I'm already looking forward to the next game, which for me, and I think for everybody actually, will be Everton at home uh, a week tonight, would you believe? So there you go. So, yeah, that, I'm afraid, is all we've got time for tonight. But before the Everton game on Monday night, uh, me and JK and I believe Clayton Beerman will be uh, resuming all of this on Friday night to preview the uh, the Chelsea versus Everton game. Uh, so don't forget to miss that. Uh, to, to miss that, that was a Freudian slip. Don't forget to watch that on YouTube or Facebook and uh, then listen to it on Acast, uh, Spotify, Apple, you name it. So there you go. Uh, looking forward to that. I really, really am. Um, I'm still deciding. Well, we are going. Yeah, we're going to do it in off the post on Wednesday, one way or another. I, I haven't done what I promised I'd do for JK, but we we will do a a cut down version. How many How many emails should we do, JK? Um, well, I think we should go to the more current ones and go back, shouldn't we? Yeah, but um, how many? Do you about... want to put a limit on the number of emails we do? Well, it depends how long they are, Chid. You have to be the judge of that. I know. If there's know. some very long ones, we should perhaps do 10. If there are some l l pithy ones... Let's we'll cherry-pick. We'll, it'll be the 15. best of. We'll yeah, do the and best absolutely. of. Absolutely, and apologise for our, our for those who've written in um, yeah. who've made the effort, because we just it, it, we haven't had the opportunity, of, and we've both been, been poorly on occasion. So. Well, we were poorly, and uh, there have been a lot of matches too, which doesn't help, but we will, we will be doing an in-off-the-post on Wednesday night, I promise you. So there you go. Now, uh, don't forget, of course, uh, for our sponsors, uh, to get the best discount off your NordVPN plan, go to nordvpn.com forward slash Chelsea Fancast. There is no risk with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee, and you will help support the Chelsea Fancast. So there you go. Uh, you can follow the show on all the social media at Chelsea Fancast, at Stanford Chidge, at Jonathan Kidd, and at DWIT9. So there you go. Um, it's been lovely. I, I have to say, I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, making me less miserable than I was before we started, Dane. Well done, you. Good to see you again, as always. Oh, yeah, I really appreciate it. It's so nice being back. Uh, can I uh, use up a couple of your times? I'm yeah, involved, mate. Go I'm for involved it. in a charity event. Am I allowed to sell that? Yeah, on yeah, of course you can, mate. God yeah, this is about, have to ask. Thank you. This is about a, a young, young girl, young lady called Scarlett. Uh, our close friend, Sarah Mike's daughter, 14-year-old Scarlett, in September 2020, when she was 10, her life changed. She had a rare cavernoma that ruptured in her spinal cord while she was sleeping. And as a result, she woke up and didn't have any use of her legs. Uh, since then, Scarlett has been working really hard on her rehabilitation. But as you can imagine, the costs involved in this are very high. Uh, as support, we know, we know really, really big events organiser, Danielle Ladiger, and she's arranged a charity football match to raise money to help her. Uh, this will be held on Saturday the 4th of May, uh, kick-off 3pm at Sutton Football Club. My godson is in EastEnders. It will be uh, Scarlet 11 versus Celebrity 11. Uh, my godson's arranged quite a few of the EastEnders cast to be in it. My godson's uh, Jaden Ladigo, who plays Denzel Danes in, in uh, EastEnders, and he's arranged for a few of them to come in it. Mike, who's Scarlett's dad, comes from a footballing family. His cousin's Luke Shaw. His uh, other cousin is Lee Johnson, who recently managed Bristol City. I think Sunderland and Hibs. His dad was Gary Johnson, who's managed Torquay. And yeah, quite a few stars coming down. They've got uh, Lee Johnson, I said, is going to play a few East Ender stars. Jonathan Douglas, who recently played for Leeds, Brentford and Ireland. Tubes from Soccer AM, who you guys all know. Uh, I think the, the one who's announced today was Harry Akenez Arati, who's a current British sprinter. Uh, he, he plays uh, he plays on Gladiators. I remember who he plays. Oh, Nitro on Gladiators. Uh, and everyone says celebrities getting announced uh, every couple of days. So as I said, it's the 4th of May. If you go to Sutton United website, you can get tickets or you can even go to Scarlet's Instagram page, which is at Scarlet's Journey 2020 and Posts are being put up. Uh, and yeah, we come along, maybe see some stars, and you might even get to see me actually make an appearance and dust that you, you are going to be playing? 
Well, I mean, I'm part of the Scarlet Eleven squad. Uh, if, I, if I stick to my strict uh, fitness regime at the moment and I've got five weeks to get fit, then you might get 20 minutes out of me if you're lucky. Where would you, you be playing? What position? Well, I don't Number know. nine, surely, Dave. Well, I would hope soon we got to tell the manager who will be obviously Scarlett and, and, and Mike, her dad, and he's going to ask us where you're hoping to play. So maybe... I don't think I can. St- <laughs> I've got the pace anymore to uh, expect to play out front. So he might see me as 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 deep as defensive midfield. But I'll see if I can pull up, pull away with being a forward again. You can be a Higwayne. You can just stand around and flick the ball here and there and miss it, but look good. I'll, I'll probably do more of a Jackson. Well, I do something good, get into the box and fall over. <laughs> Well, there we go. I mean, that sounds absolutely fantastic, Dane. And I wish all the people uh, the best of luck with that. Uh, as uh, as Dane said, it's Scarlet's journey on Instagram. And it's May the 4th at Sutton United's ground. Is it Sutton United's ground? Yeah, it's a big day. You know, it's a whole day like my soul who are a... Uh... A uh, broadcasting who broadcast across like London and Brighton, DAB, their own connection with Bar Booger. They'll be playing music. So we'll be going right into the night. As I say, tickets are £10, under 12s are free. You know, come along, you might see some stars and you might you might enjoy yourself. And, and, and Dane, you see some stars yeah. and yeah. Dane. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck with that, mate. That's fantastic. I appreciate that. Thank you. And as I said, lovely to see you on the show again. We need to get you back more often than we have. Yeah, done I really recently. enjoyed it. Yeah. Really enjoyed seeing Always you. Always lovely again. to see you, man. And as for you, wanker, <laughs> I mean, honestly, mate, my life would be impoverished without doing these shows with you twice a week. It really would be. <laughs> you know, who who am I call a wanker and they still love me? Not even my wife would get let me get away with that. <laughs> you know, you're well, the other one. The other one, Duffer, you called me as well, didn't you? Yeah, Duffer. Mate, I, old, the old Duffer. Where is he? Where's the old Duffer? I well, love I'm you to I'm pieces. Here, Gidge. I love you to pieces, as you well know. So there you go. Great to see you as always, mate. Um, looking forward to in off the post with you on Wednesday. Yes, good stuff. Me too. Good. And then we will we will reconvene with Clayton, who is even more miserable than all of us put together at the moment. If you judge yes. judging by his tweets, I I, I, I I wanted to give him a cuddle actually after reading yeah. that tweet. Yeah. It's terrible, you know. So there we go. We'll have Clayton. We'll come. We'll clear. We'll clear. We will cheer Clayton up on Friday, and you have to come and join us to make sure you do the same. But until then, thank you so much for listening and watching. See you on uh, Wednesday. Uh, until then, keep it blue, keep it carefree, and keep it chills. Up the oh, chills! Yeah. I'm so sorry. Up the chills! Ah. <laughs>